historically, you know, in, uh, in there's there is a statute in North Carolina. It's one fifty three eight nine two. It says the board commissioner sets the salaries of all county employees, including the appointed and elected officials. They can do that specifically, or they can do it through a pay and comp pay and compensation plan. And you do that through the pay and compensation plan. So <clears throat> historically, there have been adjustments of under or back up. When I got here, there were adjustments that were made in the sheriff's office for things like uh, education, uh, improvement, yeah. like if you did that. That's not a we have we have that addressed in our personnel policy for things like certificates, but they do theirs based on if you have a two-year degree or a four-year degree, they adjust the salary. So that was an existing piece. Um, there were some opportunities within the prior personnel policy to make some adjustments based on based on uh, uh, job duty changes. So when there were some changes, you could go back and, and according to the personnel policy, if there were some, some substantial changes and something that different, you could you could make an adjustment internally without having to report it. And the last personnel policy changed that. It said you got to go through that same process, but even if there are substantial changes, it has to go back to the board. So there's been this kind of give and take back and forth about how that works and how that's been administered in, in that office. Um, what Charlie said to me was they had some changes they want to make based on the pay and classification plan, based on the salary study that was done. They felt like that was that was their number one um, goal for their employees. They, they said, we want to do that. We want to do whatever it is we need to do to, to get that in place. We think that's important. Um, so he said, I got these, these changes. Well, in having a conversation with the folks at school government with, with Karen Malanzi, who is the one who writes this kind of stuff, teaches this stuff, and we rely on We rely on a lot of the school government with us because they're the one that teaches classes and all that too. And they help write the legislation like General Sunday says. Um, what she said was, you know, or, or the way I read that was in the pay and classification plan, if you the, the sheriff has the ability to put somebody in the pay and classification plan. If there is a position that's there and it's within that range, because in our paying class plan, the only thing we show is the grade, the name, the, the, the you know, whatever the position is, what the mid, what the minimum is, what the mid point is, what the maximum, maximum. Is. So you got to be within that range. So there, are, there are previously, well, there still is. If you go above the mid on a on a position, you got to come to the board. So you can go right up to the midpoint and it doesn't have to come anything above the midpoint has to go. <clears throat> um, so the conversation on these was that they wanted to make some changes based on the the pay or the, the salary study that was done three years ago because they wanted to try to get to where they need to be. And they felt like they could do that within their existing budget. And so they have, just like everybody, um, you have some lap salaries. Because they are a larger department and they have more folks, you know, a ton of folks in their department. Um, when they don't fill a position and it stays open for a while, then there is some lapse hours that occurs in there. Um, we don't see that. You don't see much of that in, in other, especially smaller departments. And you don't see that like Marty was saying, DMS, because we're still covering that. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the staffing pattern is on the road for the sheriff's office, but you know, they may not always. I don't know what this happened pattern is. Maybe it's five people, six people, seven people, whatever it is. And they may not, if they have an open, they may not choose to backfill that position. Or they may, I don't know. Um, I know in EMS we do, so that's why we don't have much of that salary there. <clears throat> but the changes they were proposing were based on the previous salary study. And what Charlie said was, we can make those changes and we'll, we'll take care of them based on our lap salaries in our salary line item budget um, that we've not you know, we've not filled position and we've had those funds and we've not used those funds and we will bring to you and we understand because he said I understand the short term implications of this and I understand the long term implications of this oh no he said I understand that on July 1 the board gets to set a new budget and the board essentially can say whatever they want on budget because every year they get the opportunity to um, so, so 
based on that and the action that the, that the board took in August when we had the discussion about do you want to do you want to take the do you want to exercise additional control over the sheriff's office budget and in the conversation with Kara she said you can't do that at a lineup level. you're not allowed to do that because he's a he's an elected official so you can't go and say you can you can only spend a hundred dollars in this line item. Although that's the way we do our budgets, man. Our budgets are by line item, and we try to stay in that. Um, you can't. She said you can't hold him that. You can only hold him to functional levels, or you can just you do set the maximum amount of FTEs that are in that office, and so you can do that, or you can also control it by going to the functional level. Which she said functional level would be salaries and benefits, operations. So you would essentially say you have a hundred thousand dollars in capital, and that's all you can spend in capital. You have five million in operations. You can't go over five million dollars in operations. You have whatever salary and benefits. You can only use that much. You can't move money around. Otherwise, she said that, that unless you put those controls on there, because the sheriff's in the elected official, he has the ability to move money around in his budget how he pleases to move money around his budget. So if he wants to uh, you know, move money from this line item over here to do this and that, he can do that unless you put the controls on it, but only at a functional level. You can't take him all the way down to the line item. <clears throat> so when the board said, you know, when, when, when y'all debated that and said, you know, we're not interested in micromanaging the sheriff, micromanaging the sheriff's operations. He should be able to do his operations as he please. If he needs to move stuff, he wants to move stuff. Um, and y'all, and, and the board said, but we are going to stick to and re reaffirm that there are a certain number of employees and you can't see those FTEs. And they said, right, we understand that. We're not doing that. We're not seeing those FTEs. So all that, and in that reading, and, and a lot of like Kara said was, there is a lot of ambiguity in it. That, that it's not really clear the way the General Assembly has put it all together, the, the roles and responsibilities um, of, of exactly what a sheriff can do, what a board commissioner does. There's some pretty hard language, but there are some nuances in there. And, and some of it's different, some of it had to be tested. There's some court, there's some case law on some others, there's not on others. So you're kind of you kind of compromise and figure out how the best way to do it. <clears throat> so, um, so those changes were proposed. There is one of those changes. Um, the majority of the changes that they proposed um, adjust. There's, there's 35 positions. One of those positions is moving um, is moving a SRO who, my understanding from Charlie, is a 35 year law enforcement employee who came from who, who retired from the state and was with license and theft, I think. Uh, and they had wanted that person to be a part of the command structure. And he said, I'm not really interested. But they convinced him that if they can do something, they do it. One of those moves is to move that person from an SRO position and promote that person from an SRO to a major position. Well, there is a major position in the pay and classification plan. It was in there, my understanding, under Sheriff Jordan. And when Sheriff Coleman came in, um, they didn't fill it, but that position is in there. So if you look at your pay and class plan, it says major, but there's nobody in there. So, look at, so looking through our policy, <coughs> he can essentially do that. And the board really doesn't have any control over that because it says in a promotion, um, you can go up to, you don't even have to go to the board, the way I read it, that's only on new hires if you want to move into one. Typically, if you hire a new person and you go to a new point, you got to go to the board. But under a promotion, you just can't exceed the maximum. So that one is pretty clear. Not a big issue with that. As long as there's money in the budget to cover it, the need is looked at it, and, and there is money in the budget to cover it. That one's not. That one's not an issue. The, the personnel policy essentially is silent for us on in in grade adjustments, except for. Um, Except for additional duties, where we talked about if you had significant change, significant change in, in duties, um, it, it is essentially silent for us. So when I look at it, please, it, 
if I can't find something in there that says I can do it, if they don't, because we don't have the enabling, we kind of look at it and say, well, there's no enabling legislation from the board that allows us to do that, so we don't do it. The flip on that is because our, you know, the sheriff's argument, Charlie's argument is the sheriff is an independently elected official. If it's silent for that, then he should be able to do what he needs to do because he has sole control and sole operation of his department, of his office. And add to that that the board said, we don't want to micromanage your stuff. You can move money around as you want to. Additionally, add to that, when Kara Malanza said to me, when I asked her about it, I said, okay, well, here's specifically the question. Can you go and adjust in a range the position? In fact, I think the way I said it was, can the sheriff unilaterally do that? She said, well, the sheriff can't unilaterally do that. She said, because it falls back to the pay and classification plan. And I said, well, okay, our pay and classification, she says, what does your pay and classification plan speak to on that? I said, well, our pay and classification plan, if you look at your budget, our pay and class plan shows, like I said before, it shows the name of the position, the grade, the minimum, the midpoint, the maximum. She said, well, what is it, how does it read in that policy, in that pay and class plan, how does it read when you're dealing with elected officials? I said, well, it doesn't, but we have a personnel policy that generally talks about those kind of things. And she said, well, that's all well and good, but personnel policy doesn't apply to elected officials. It doesn't apply to the sheriff's office for the public registry needs. So what she said to me was that essentially needs to be in there. It needs to refer in that, and I know it is, that's a very technical piece of it. But what she was saying was in your pay and classification plan, and we'll fix that in this coming year, in that pay and classification plan, you should take that language and put it at the bottom of that page that says any adjustments, changes should be referenced in the personnel policy, in those specific chapters of the personnel policy that address that. Because in our personnel policy, it does say that the sheriff is, that certain chapters are applicable to the sheriff's office and the registry needs. And it talks about not only hiring, not only firing, those kind of things. It's statutorily, they have that within themselves. So combine all that together makes it where you can argue from one side, the sheriff ought to have the opportunity to do that. And then from the other side, you can say, well, I don't know, it's not really clear. But deputies are classified just like every other employee. I'm sorry? Deputies are classified just like every other employee. And that's, and so is the clerk's office, I mean, the registry needs office. And that's the way we've always done it. And what they're trying to do is to change our past policy and our past practice. And my answer is no. So they're not, they're not trying to change the class. All those are the same. Right, they're trying to adjust the midpoint. An in-grade adjustment. That's right. So commissioners have to do that. So from our perspective, when we looked at it and looking at, and again, this was, this was looking at, are there changes, are there some nuances in there that could be argued either way? And what ability does the sheriff have as an elected official based on some of those things to do with his folks? The other 250 employees that work for him. That's not smart. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that, I think from the sheriff's perspective, he's saying, these are my employees, they're not your employees. And no, he can say that all he wants to, but the taxpayers of this county pay his employees just like the taxpayers pay the social service employees. He is in outer space with these arguments. I'm just, I'm trying to. I understand here, but, but Brian, Brian, you, you, you need, if the rest of this board is agreeable, you need to carry the message back to him that we're not supporting this crap. Well, and that's where, that's where, when there becomes a question about that, where there is a lot of gray and a lot of ambiguity, it ultimately comes back to the board to decide that. And I'm, I'm, don't want to jump out somewhere where I don't need to be. So, you know, and I know that in some of the conversations I've had with some of them, you said, well, I really don't want to do it. But there's clearly, 
there's clearly a pathway for one or two of those positions. It's just our policy is silent in regards to in grade adjustments. And I know we're getting advice from uh, from institute of government, and they're usually pretty close. But I would feel better this early in the budget process with going to the attorney general and getting a ruling on how we can do his budget. And I don't know how you asked that question. I, my thing is not that clear about it right now, but we need to get an opinion in writing from him, not just a casual answer, okay? And then I think if it's up to me, I'll tell you what I would do. I would tighten his budget up to the point and give him the number of FTEs, take out some of those jobs that he can't fill, and tighten his budget up to the point that he's going to have to come back to us for money. Because, guys, I know that you disagree with me and you can be as mad as you want to be about it. But this guy, this guy has set us up ever since he's been sheriff. And he has spent a lot more money than even Alan Jordan did. And we have a responsibility to see where the county money is going. And a line item budget, I would propose a line item budget for him. We need to let the manager know now because he's entering the budget process what kind of form he's going to have. Problem is, if you do just the sheriff, he's crazy enough to sue you. In which case, he would probably win because we were picking him out. So we need to do not only him, but either all of the departments or one or two other departments so that we can't get accused of, of, of targeting somebody. But this thing can't keep going like it's going. His overtime is unreal. He's got a deputy that's going to make $80,000 this year based on overtime. He's got other deputies that are making $20,000 based on, inter on overtime. And this is in a county with a declining population. And the other sheriffs have run their business with a whole lot less help than this guy is. So we've got a problem here. And I'm a Republican and he's a Republican. Not all Republicans are the same. That's the truth. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That, that guy. So, Some people think you're a rhino. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know He's the original. He's the original. Uh, but I'd like, to, I'd like to say this too. Well, and I mentioned this uh, earlier to some of you commissioners. I said something good about it yesterday. I really would like to see a breakout for the last seven years of what we have spent with the sheriff, with the jail, and the sheriff office each year. Just two line items, jail, sheriff's office. Starting all the way back where Allen was, was, was sheriff. With the, with the seven with, years. With the special budget ordinances for capital items carried yeah, as yeah, a so separate we, yeah, we're not blaming so, for that. Well, no, we're blaming for that. Well, okay. well see, you're spending, <laughs> so we'll break it out. You're so spending a million and a half dollars now because yeah. nobody called to repair the jail cells. Yeah. It was a setup to stampede us into building a new jail. You and I caught that and brought it to the public's attention what was going on. That's incompetence on a grand scale. I called the people who do the repairs. I personally heard them say, nobody called us to fix any of these jail cells. He's wasting your money left and right. I mean, I, I just like to just get a reference on point with Alan Jordan and see how we've done. <laughs> I really would. I mean, I'm that's serious. I, mean, I remember Alan. So did I. I, didn't, I liked Alan fine. I like Harry Meredith even better. Because that's who we saw. We really just saw Harry. You know? So what do you guys think? Are you going to take a position on this? Position <coughs> on if I don't hear anything, I'm going to consider that by consent, we're going to do a line item budget on him and we're going to look at it really hard and tighten up. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going there. We actually do, and I know what you're saying, you're talking about at that level. We actually do a line item budget for every department. If you look in your budget book. What I'm saying is we pass the, it is a part of the ordinance yeah. instead of this three page Joke. Yeah, the problem the problem with with passing a line item budget is that 
he would have to come back to the commissioners any time there was any change in any line item for any department. I love it. That's what I want. Uh, I don't know. Uh, You're going to let him walk, right? No, no, no. We're talking about overall. Overall. <clears throat> You've got no control over his budget right here. He takes you to court, and that's what's going to be presented in court. You can say line item to the judge all you want to, and he's going to say, where is your ordinance? And this is it. So you so don't have an ordinance. So here's the, here's the, here's the information that came from Karis. Is there's one more piece of the analysis, and that's the budget ordinance. According to General Statute 15913, the Board of Commissioners may adopt a budget ordinance by department or by function code. If the Board adopts the budget ordinance by function code, then it can set a specific total amount for the Sheriff's Office salary slash benefits. Although the Sheriff is free to hire and set terms of employment, he or she must act within the total budget appropriations for her salary and benefits. That was what that was what we talked about in August. Remember that you could do functional areas, salary and benefits, <coughs> operations, capital, and you can hold. You can't hold him according to CARA. The statutes don't allow you to hold him any tighter than that. I think the, the I think the attorney general is going to be a little bit more objective. We, we can we can ask them. I'm just saying that CARA is the one. She's an attorney and she writes this. I understand. I talked to her. I know. It, so, but uh, but by the same token, us to do that, we can do it. Yeah, you need to take a vote on that. Well, that's a motion that we that we do the that number one that we approach the attorney general for a definitive uh, uh, letter on what our authority is in budgeting for the sheriff and what the limits are. Mr. Chairman, we have, we, we're not in a position to take any votes, any motions. You guys are doing a great job of avoiding the issue. So you want to do that? This, I mean, what, this is on the agenda so for the yeah. next meeting. Okay. Now, second second motion that we that I'll make is let's do this one first. No, we can't. Yeah. We're, it's over with. It's coming up at the next commissioner. Right. <laughs> the, the next thing that I propose, and this is a motion, is that we do the sheriff's budget based on total number of FTEs with defined salary ranges, and that we do it by so-called line item, pending the letter from the attorney general that's a motion now frankie tell me we can't vote on it we can't vote on it okay then that's on the agenda for the next meeting now guys this budget stuff <coughs> is not a game dumping the money and running is something that commissioners should not be doing three pages for a budget ordinance is a disgrace and the people at the at the um, what is that that regulates us in the in the treasurer's Local office? Government. Local government commission say that they have on their list writing a set of rules for doing budgets by uh, a more definitive set of rules for doing budgets by purpose and function. Now, when that's coming, I don't know. Maybe when I see the head man up there, I'll put a bug in his ear. No, <laughs> you want to run the guy that's in Raleigh that's over the treasurer. Do you think there are various numbers coming? Of course it does. I'm just asking. You call that. You call that. No, I'm not asking when I call no. that. I'm asking if various numbers are coming. That's, that's a sum. Yeah, it's nothing. It's a joke. So let me, let me just kind of go over your budget ordinance with you. The, the, the budget ordinance <coughs> is done at a functional level, functional area. So as you see, it talks about general government, it talks about human services. And there are restrictions in here that require us. It does allow us to be able to keep the budget in, in order so that we don't get out of place um, with the LGC. Mm -hmm. um, it is easier for us at a functional level. I will give you that. It's a whole lot easier for staff yeah. and for finance right. at a functional level because it allows us at the end of the year to be able to make sure that the, the overall budget, overall total budget balances. Mm -hmm. um, there are requirements in here. That we are required to report to you certain things, and any changes that are outside of which you have to come to the board. Any budget amendments have to come to the board, and any changes that move outside of functional areas have to come to the board. And then it's reported to you anytime there are changes between departments. So there are controls in here. There are broad controls. So if I may, this is the official level of budgetary control so that when the auditors come in 
and they see if Beaufort County has overspent their budget, this is the level, this is the level that the auditors look at. But in practice, there's a very different thing going on here. In practice, Commissioner Richardson, in practice, we have a line item budget. And when I'm doing the pre audit, I thoroughly disagree because that's what the I'm manager I'm telling you, I police that respect. You may be replacing that, but it has no legal standing because it's what the manager was telling us about the reason that the sheriff, the argument that the sheriff is using to do what he wants to do is because we don't have it in the ordinance. So what I was going to say is that I do that for every department except the sheriff's office and re registered deeds. They are not held within a line item. They, they are held the within their total. That's that's what we've been working under the whole time. It's because they're elected officials. We need to tighten these budgets up. Just because you're an elected official doesn't give you the right to waste the public's money. I don't think I didn't say there's any value in talking about this until you get something from the attorney general. Right. I thought, of course, I mean, what he's talking about is we just chased our tail. Yeah. My question is right now, without the raises that the spend for probably these five ten dollars more raises, at this point, we don't have no say so over those raises. Is that correct? Yes, we do. You, I mean, you do. And, 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 and again, I mean, that's where it, it, there is some ambiguity in that. Well, well, what is your, what, what is the, what is the, the, the solution for solving this, this problem? The solution is for you to say to me, do it or don't do it. Now, one of those I can do, I don't have any, I don't have any question at all about one of those. The main those. The majors, the job, the majors, job. and that's the one. That's the the other ones that are in grade. The, the personnel policy doesn't speak to it. The sheriff has the ability. I mean, there's some flexibility in there, and having conversations with school government about. There's some ambiguity. I mean, again, from, for our perspective, um, and I know Mr. Richard doesn't agree with that, and, and I understand your I understand your point. Um, when we look at it from the big picture. The sheriff has said, I'm going to bring you a neutral budget next year. And even if he doesn't, you have control over setting that budget number one be anyway. Yeah. So he said, I'm going to bring you a revenue neutral, a neutral budget, regardless of these changes that I'd like to be making these hours. So we're going to get a flat budget from him. It's going to take off the table for us that entire office. So we're only going to be focusing on the rest of the county employees as we look to try to make cuts and and look at those additional revenues we've got to try to implement some part of that salary study. So um, for us, it helps. Overall, it's a benefit for us if you if you say, okay, that's your that, that's essentially your department's money. You do with it. You increase because we're not coming back. You you've already been taken care of. So if we move forward, I mean, it's a it, it would help us trying to get everybody. Otherwise, we're going to get into where we got to look at everybody. So now I may go back to his budget and say we're going to cut you, but. Another thing, another person, I don't ever know if this is about to make me see. Now, it, 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 it part of it's our fault because for two years you have talked to us, you and me have talked to us about uh, the salary study. Three. Yeah. Three. The first time, the first time that we gave you all right, three years. And if you remember serving me well, I, I asked and begged you guys, let's go build right now because we don't have the money to fulfill it. That's neither here nor there. But my question now is, even if nobody had done anything, and we and, and we several commissioners said, let's just do this, give y'all a good hit, make the playing field level. How many employees out of the 378 or 380 that we had, how many of them would have got a $5,000 raise? I, I, I don't know. That's my point. I mean, there, there are, there there are some that would. But I don't know if I, I have to go back full. But because there's there's individual when she went through that, she looked at individual it's by position and by person. So there would be some. And I personally told you doing our our thing. I said I'm a, I'm gonna hold my nose and see can we institute this project this year. But I but I, I, and I told them to leave it there. And I'm telling you and I'm telling the board. I don't know whether I can raise my hand and support it this year or not. Because it's, it's, it's still out of whack. If some got a five thousand, six thousand dollar raise, and then the lowest man, the lowest man, the minimum wage, 
you're not going to get a $10,000 raise if you bring him up to mid point. You're not going to bring him up to mid point. You're going to bring him up to the high level in which that job is doing today. You're not going to bring him up to mid point. Am I correct? I probably not bring him up to mid point. It depends on how long he's been here. Yeah, it depends on how long he's been here because that's the other piece of dealing with that compression. However, if you don't do anything, those people are still where they were, and you just and, and they're continuing to get hammered. I will tell you this: <coughs> implementing that salary study does zero for me. It does zero for Anita. It doesn't do anything for us. All it does is it helps us get our get the employees who work for this county where they need to be. But it doesn't do a thing for us. So there's no personal there's no yeah. personal push at all. It all needs to be treated the same. But if I get a five thousand dollars raise. Right. Then commissioners can say we're going to give a two thousand dollar cost of living. Right. I don't got a five thousand dollar raise down a two percent cost of living. I mean, to, to me, I, I mean, if, if it's okay, if, if he got the right to do what he do, let him do. It. But uh, but but I cannot honestly honestly sit here and say it's all right to give somebody a five thousand dollar raise when the other people still out here sucking that like dollars. I, I mean, that's just me, and if it passes, I don't care. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lose no sleep over. I, I understand, and that is why we are trying to, to at least get a nod from the board to say, go back and do what you guys can do on the budget and implement as much as you can. Now, is everybody gonna get something? No. I mean, you know, Commissioner Richards just said everybody ought to be treated the same. Not everybody is in the same boat. We, we've got folks. No, that within the salary at. study, that everybody needs to be treated fairly within the salary study. But this business of taking surpluses and dividing it up has never happened in Beaufort County before. It's totally outside of the way we budget, and it is definitely bad management. You're asking for trouble when you do this. Let me ask you a question. I heard what you said a minute ago that uh, they did that, uh, their budget would be neutral when it, when it comes to us. And when you say that budget, you're talking about the shared detail as well as communication. So therefore, nobody over there will get any talent increase. No, that's not what he's saying. If the board did a 2% call, then that would be uniform for everybody across the board. So what he was saying was... That, that, that was I, I agree with he, he, he's already got a fat budget is the only reason that he can say that he can do that. The budget is fat. His budget is loaded <coughs> with waste. And look at the overtime going on in the Sheriff's Department with more deputies and fewer people in Beaufort County and he's still running, I don't know what he's running, half a million a year in overtime. I mean, you got deputy that got one that can go back 80,000 this year. You got plenty of others that are making twenty thousand above their base in overtime. This is not management. My question is, do we have that data? Do we can you go through and show sure. us? I mean, if you've got an investigator that's on the scene and he's staying there and it's gonna be overtime, he just can't walk away. Well it's it's time, I'm done. But it's I'm just trying to see the data that Commissioner Richmond talking about. We've got we got a spreadsheet for sure. Pay plan has a spreadsheet. The sheriff's, the sheriff's office the is included in the pay study. So as far as the recommendation on their pay, that is that what you're asking? That is included. I'm just in saying, the pay if they're saying there's a guy this year is going to make eighty thousand dollars. Oh, you're saying how much time have they worked to show what they're working on? What they're doing? Yeah, yeah I, I think we can go back. I mean, if you want to pull someone in particular and say, I want to see what they were well, doing. I'm just they they document why they were over and, and the only thing i'm saying is it's usually in three had, words or less we had uh um, ems a better day and i understand i, I understand they having to work all the time they they i mean these guys will these paramedics are hard to find so to pull one i mean like you said i need to go out a month in advance put my reservation in for you to come in and work now these investigators i mean they're hot on the drug case they're hot on the drug case I think so, Charlie would argue that most of his overtime, and I've heard him say transfer. this, is transporting the inmates for safety. Okay. Which goes and, back to the jail. And it goes back to, here we, said, in jail. here we go, safekeeping again. They didn't call anybody to fix the cells. It's the only reason they're empty now. Do we have that proof? I mean, what, what are you basing that on? I talked to the people that fixed the cells, and they said nobody called them to repair the cell. What else did you need, Jerry? 
Well, proof to that. Well, well you, you just, you just called me a liar for what you're doing, and yeah. that's not smart. Been Mr. Mr. Chairman, yeah. when, we, uh, when we approved this last budget, I went back and looked. When you look at the agencies that have 20, that have a 24 hours, seven day a week, 365 day coverage, when you add salaries, and, and I remember what the amount was for overtime, it was $760,000 for these different ones. Can't remember what it was for part time, but when you added part time and overtime together and divided it by the total, it was 14%. I mean, that gives you some idea of, you can sit here and talk about it all day, but I can tell you, when you're the supervisor and you're trying to line up the deputies and you're trying to line up everybody else that it takes to do that, it's a different game. Uh, we, last, last year, I went, I went back and looked at the audit. Uh, they were $300,000 under budget for this last audit that we got presented. Uh, at our January meeting. Sure. Yes. When you when you look at the the salary when you look at the salary uh, study, it was approved in 2017. So we've sat here 18, 19, and 20. We're getting ready to work on the 21 budget. My observation and some of the conversation I've had with uh, with Charlie is. I'm assuming that some of the people have already gotten what he's trying to do for these 35. I guess my question is, is since July the 1st of this last year through the end of December, have we already approved? I mean, it might have come in three at a time or five at a time. Uh, they've made some adjustments based on hires as they hire folks. Okay. They kind of like, you know, what I said about when we hire new people. Which I'm fine with. Do I hire new people at the minimum hiring range? Typically not. I hire them where they're supposed to be. Does that sometimes cause an issue with equality? Sometimes it does. But if, if I can't pay somebody what they can make in the market, I'm never going to get anybody. So there's there's some changes that have been made. So what he said to me is he's comfortable where he is with all the rest of the folks. That if this change is made, they're not coming back to us again for this to adjust things. Is what he said, and I mean I can only take him on his on his word, and then to say I'm going to bring you a, a budget that's flat of those changes. So for us, that says okay, I'm done with it. Now I'm concentrating on the rest of the employees, and at least gets us something. Yeah, but that's that's not a good reason for me. Yes, yeah. okay. you know, I'll fight right down into the dirt because it's wrong. Did we agree that we go to the attorney general? Has no, we have to go to the attorney Frankie, you can, you can agree in here, but Frankie's objecting. We've done it plenty of times before. But, but Frankie's rolling the stone because he's in bed with the sheriff. So that's that's why. Keep, keep your mouth shut. Let me let me ask. Keep your mouth shut. You're just you're just doing this fake news. You're truth, doing the fake news. Truth hurts. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and when you talk. say the sheriff's department is responsible for the repairs, you the guy that said here for twenty some years approving the budget. Right. Twenty some years. They didn't right. call to have the sales no, no reason why yeah. yeah. no, I mean, to vote. You're, you're responsible for the repairs. No, I'm not don't, responsible. Don't pass that board. Board. We had a, a board that didn't want to vote. We we're not going to vote. Yeah. But but still, we could vote, couldn't we? We could. Yeah, we could. We just have people rolling logs in front of us over here. Is all it is. We, we, we have a proper meeting. We're all together. We could vote. Could we? Yeah, we did. We voted for the telephone system last year. So, you know, it's, it's, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, I, I mean, you've done this before, why don't you do a telephone, I mean, not a telephone poll, but send out an email and ask for our responses back. If Frankie, we're not playing the game. There's, there's, a, there's an issue here, and all you're doing is subversion. So I'm about. saying, Hood, if you want to go ahead and speed the process up, get him to do it, and let everybody respond back. Why can't you both sitting right here in this room right now, oh, right here. What's wrong with the truth? You're running from it, aren't you? I, 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 the manager doesn't need to contact us. We're all sitting here. I'll make the motion again. So we go to the Attorney General for an opinion on how we can budget the sheriff. Mr. Chairman, these are out of order. 
See, here we go. Rolling the law. Are, are we out of order? No, we're, we're not, not out, out of order. order. Y'all, I can't remember what year it was. Y'all made the motion in the second and it passed that there would be no votes taken. And they have it on its own. You can't go back 25 years and try to pull the rules. Let me ask you a question. That's now I like reading the Bible, Jerry. Good, good, good. I do, I do not have a problem with what you asked for future but I, I really don't. No, for this budget. I really don't. No, for this budget. You're rolling the lock. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, but hit me out. I just ain't agree with what you want to do. But what That's I'm saying right. is, what I'm saying is, we're talking about the budget for 2021. We're talking right. about the budget we're going to approve this spring. That's right. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. But the thing that I'm trying to wrestle with right now is what's it on the table at hey, the current oh budget. i understand you got two issues on hand we're here this is a budget meeting we're doing the budget and we're oh, well i don't have a problem with going to the attorney general i don't have, I don't have a problem I, 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 I don't think you need a motion for that yeah you can, yeah or any any one of us can go but it'd be better to be stronger coming from we'll be better coming from the Which you can you can do consensus yeah you know the consensus <laughs> Who objects to going to the attorney general? Who objects? Who objects? Now, which, which which budget are we talking about? Are we talking about the budget that we're talking about? The budget that we're in right now. We're talking about policy on this budget. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Who's going to stand up and say? Hey, you can do that. Yeah. What budget are you referring to? I'm referring to the budget that we're in right now. 2021. Yeah. No, 2021 budget. You said 2021. The one that we're going to pass this. Well, okay, 2020. The one that we're going to pass in before July the 1st. Right. Of 2020. 2021. Yeah. 2021. Okay. Okay. So who objects to getting the attorney general? How would? Why? I thought we were trying to fix the problem we're currently in. Oh, see, here we go. You're just, just running, you, you guys are just running in a circle. <laughs> you guys are silly looking. You got, well, yeah, you know, the, the way this is being presented to us, it, the problem is now, but it fixes a problem for later. So you're talking about spanning two budgets, 2019, 2020. And you don't, they know what they're doing in span. You don't have to explain it to them. Why it's a matter of semantics. Yeah. Really. Huh? Why don't we get an attorney general's opinion so we can do the people's work? How about that? Yeah. See, I'm now you're running in circles. Listen. Motion to adjourn. We don't need a motion. No, we're not adjourning. Recess. Recess. Whatever. Did you want to say anything? About recess until 419. Can I ask a question? Yes. I need some help, is what I need. I need some help from this board. Because I can look at the argument, and I'm really not the one who ought to be arguing that. <laughs> I, can, I can see it from the sheriff's perspective in what he's arguing. I can look at the personnel policy and I can say, okay, well, according to what I understand, you can this bill to that I can see exactly where Charlie's coming from, and I can agree with that. And I can go sign those personal action forms and make it happen. Or I can say, I'm not sure because there is some ambiguity in there. I don't know that it's. I can I'm help in you. A barrel. I can help yeah, you. Right. You tell Charlie you can't get an answer from the board. I, well, I did last <laughs> <right. I can't laughs> not here. So, so, so that's the case. Nothing happens. And nothing great. happens. I'll oh, and tell him to keep not showing up for these meetings and we'll see how it affects his budget. <laughs> <laughs>